like education and, and medical, have you even, are you even beginning to touch some of that stuff, or are you yeah. still at that? Yeah, Steve and I actually worked on uh, an educational game for the Dallas Museum. Is that the Dick game? Or yeah, yeah, um, with one eye instead of two. Oh yeah, Russell contributed. To oh yeah, that. he's <laughs> not only has he not worked on. The I was game, a pixel. Even, I was a pixel pusher for that one. It, he was, where he, he is you were on the tail end. I'm sorry. The, the 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 original like core group was like Ken and I came. Ken started. Yeah, and clean up. And yeah. we're the cleanup crew. And don't yeah, forget though that Russell, you were just recently dropped by UTV from the payroll, so it's just <laughs> yeah. another kick in your butt. Yes, yeah, so all this work that I've been doing for them, and, and they dropped me from the yeah. payroll. You were okay. So this is the Which Russell. I'll be, made a I'll be homeless. Maybe three days. So the name of this episode is going to be the Russell Gets No Respect show. Yes, the, yes. Okay. And there will be a PayPal donation. <laughs> so click on it many times, please, and check out my Google ads. That's right, and a tip jar. Don't forget to leave a tip. Thank yes. You. Okay, so you worked on the dig. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the All of you worked on the dig. Yeah, yeah, most of us. A, a four-year four project? Yeah. Oh, off and on, yeah. Um, so, so the idea was we wanted to take an exhibit at the museum and kind of um, find a way to take the sometimes boring world of um, fine arts and try to trump it up and make it look uh, a little more interesting to a younger crowd. And, and so the, the 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 catch thing we always say is you know so that you know the little girl who plays the video game wants to drag her uh, grandfather to the museum and not vice versa. So, so the idea was just to take one particular exhibit and then make it fun and exciting. But this was one of the, f the first examples of going beyond just the, the, what we would consider the traditional art world mm -hmm. and starting to add things like art and technology together or it doesn't have emerging media kind of stuff to it, but it is that first step of, of delivering on art and technology and not just art because we know the way the kids are these days you know, with the gaming crowd being what it is, um, that little girl is probably played games and is influenced by the internet and, and it's tough to get her to write a page or read a page. Well, to write a page, read a page, or even go there and walk and see something that is it's not a wall. Yeah, it's not interactive. It sits there. It doesn't do anything when you touch it. Other we than and it dress it up a lot. Yes. Yeah. Well, in my former in my former life, one of them. I did product design and development for 10 years, and we worked with the Dallas Museum about a year ago mm -hmm. on trying to bring interactivity to the space. So the kids would come in, it was you know, an extension, you know, it was more of the environment extension of what you were doing, but to get the kids and they would come in with, a, a, they would get a book or it would be a treasure hunt or a pirate hunt or a pirate, whatever, and they would go around and have to do certain things. I mean, it was. Their budget was pretty low, and yeah. so it wasn't a, it wasn't a lot. You know, I mean, <laughs> right. maybe some crayons and a coloring book, but at least it was something. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's going to be the key. You know, if they want to change their their um, viewership, uh, which you know, I think the Dallas Museum of Art in particular is one of those um, uh, museums that's on the forefront of that, trying to get um, a new, you know, more interest from a younger crowd, because that's a lot of it. You know pretty soon it's going to be coming down to those kids wanting to go back there and thinking of it as a positive experience. And they've been really pushing that. that you ever go there on a Friday? <coughs> Thank you, Steve. Here's the dog barking. <laughs> so uh, I think we just deafed our uh, cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try. Well, Friday night is great. Friday night is packed at the DMV. Yeah. Uh, and it's got a lot of young people. Like, we went one time and I guess prom was being held there because they were all dressed up. And yeah, we did the, uh, and Frank DeForest sound design class last semester, we produced pieces that were up for the, uh, one assignment was looking at picking out a particular piece of work and, and making sound to accompany that painting, and the other one was they have a, an area, I think it's on the fourth floor, uh, Crossroads, mm -hmm. it's that weird kind of triangle shaped spot that's off in the corner and they really didn't know what to do with it, so they, they made some sort of exhibit Crossroads depth, you know, different cultures, all that, and so we created sound for that. Um, unfortunately, it sort of, pardon the pun, died in that space because we didn't take it beyond what we're trying to do now, which would be to, you know, sh you can listen to it, you can see the images, we could go and take film, we could take digital, 
photographs, put it to the music so you could at least experience it as it was there. And it was geared towards the younger, well, it was geared towards interactivity and, and sound and experiments. Because even in the emerging media stuff that we're doing, and since you have a bit of a media background, there's a lot of museums out there right now that are doing you know, either the podcast or you can go and listen to an artist talk about something that they've done. And so it's inside your head as well as in front of you on the wall. The pretty popular thing now is the, the audio tours. I like almost some museums trying to roll that out. So They're doing a lot of iPod stuff yeah. instead of just the old cassettes that you strap on. And, you know, you can, and from what I can tell, they put a lot of this stuff online now. So you, yeah. you, you might pay for the official produced version while you're there, but you also have all this extra stuff that you can get a hold of, either through downloads off the web or iTunes or whatever. So, you see what you started with, Dig? It's amazing. It's phenomenal. <laughs> we were we were you know there at the beginning. That's right. And I was there at the end <laughs> to make it look good. <laughs> okay. So. so what else will you end up doing then through, will you come out of the weekend with something to and show and is it is it you know, a playable game? Is it uh, 10 minutes? I mean, what what's the outcome for? The yeah, what kind of genre but like, do, the, do these happen to be sometimes, you know? It kind of depends on what the proposals people write. Uh, last time was multiplayer and the benefit of that is that you don't have to uh, make a whole lot of art assets like you can make. Um, a level like I've seen basically, and then uh, people's experience in that uh, area are just playing with other people, so you don't have to um, write a story necessarily, you don't have to script events, and it's just a lot of fun for people to actually play the game all together. Um, that said, the, uh, a couple years back when they did one, it was a single player game, it was um, you're running around shooting monsters, um, so it really depends. And then, you know, I think the thing I like most about doing, and, and they're usually first person shooter, third person shooter, because those are the easily available engines. Um, but the, the thing I, I enjoy most about, you know, what we did last time was because we chose an idea that allowed itself for emergent gameplay, we didn't actually have to script a whole lot. Um, we just did a little bit of interaction, and then all the fun is actually done by people blowing each other up and pulling um, each other up. I'll represent the uninitiated again. I hear emergent gameplay quite a bit. I understand, you know, emergence and you know how, how it works. But in a game setting, what is that? A, what what actually happens? What what does someone? How do you take into account, you know, me doing something, well, that, causing something to happen? That's exactly what what it is. It's not being able to take into account everything. So you you set a sort of uh, you have a certain set of game rules that you sort of establish to make your interactions, but you, you never know that someone's going to point his rocket launcher at the ground and shoot it, and then that'll kick him up, you know, 15 feet in the air, but not kill him. So, you you know, thus rocket jumping is born, you know, the things like people right. body hopping, okay. right? So, so people learn these strategies. I mean, you do the same thing in, in regular sports, right? I mean, someone, first person who learned they could do a bicycle kick in soccer is, you know, like a three Or the right? Fosbury, who did the Fosbury flop and track. Exactly, know. exactly. Because one of the things I was reading with, with um, or the refrigerator who did the refrigerator shuffle. That's right. Um, at the end of scoring. At mm -hmm. the Super Bowl. Yes. Uh, Perry. What was this? Refrigerator Perry. Refrigerator Perry. Perry. So there's a lot of unintended things. Also sold his I mean, Super Bowl. But don't a lot of people who play the games, you know, they, they play, they, they do all kinds of stuff in the game just to see what will happen. It yeah, may not be well, part of the official gameplay, but they're looking to see kind of interesting because they actually have, like, there, there's been a lot of research in this area, and this is one of the areas there has been a lot of research, but there, there's actually some player personalities that exist out there, just like there is in the real world and, and how they do, but, but yeah, like, there are, there is a core group of uh, people who play games. It's not all of the gamers, but there's a large group of gamers who, what they enjoy doing is, is going out, exploring the world, and trying to break it. I mean, that's just what you're going to do. Your point in Far Future is about the road. Yes. So, the person who disrupts the game. Mm -hmm. so. and, and it's it's part of the fun, you know. Um, Second Life, I I find to be a little boring. Um, and so we were at the, the big... Make uh, sure you edit in for Dean's sake that you find it really...